Grace and peace be to each of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is indeed the Christ of God. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just sang in Christ alone, and the last stanza of that particular song says, No power of hell or scheme of man can ever pluck me or pluck us from your hand. Thank you, O oh Lord, for this blessed fact. Thank you. So, Heavenly Father, today we continue our study of Luke chapter 20. Be with us, O oh God, as we clarify and learn some things that we did not know last week and then possibly move forward. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Last week, we began Luke chapter 20. And the chapter began with the Pharisees asking Jesus, by what authority had Jesus overturned the tables of the money changers in the temple courtyard and send the people who were in there packing? Jesus answered their question by asking a question. Which the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders of the people, they did not answer. So Jesus didn't answer their question. Following that, Jesus told a parable about a certain man who owned a, vine, a vineyard who leased it to vine dressers. The vine dressers refused to give the quantity of fruit that they had originally agreed to give to that owner at vintage time. They refused to give it to him. The owner sent three servants at three separate occasions to get his fruit but to no avail. The vine dressers wouldn't give the owner of the vineyard his due. Lastly, the owner sent his son in the hope that his son would have success with the vine dressers. Uh, though we could hear from the word probably in the text, which could have also been translated as perhaps or maybe, we could hear from that particular phraseology that the owner was not too sure even that his son would have success. And uh, his son did not have success. He sent his son, and the vine dressers treated him even worse than all the others who had been sent before him. In fact, the vine dressers threw the son out of the vineyard and killed him in the hope that they would receive the son's inheritance, which is just plain stupid. When Jesus told the chief priests, scribes, and elders of the people that the owner would come and kill the vine dressers and give the vineyard to others, their response was, certainly not. And Jesus looked at them and said, What then is this that is written? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Whoever falls on that stone will be broken, but on whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder. After the message, Cheryl asked a question because she wanted some more understanding of what this particular verse meant. And I told her I would have to look it up because I didn't know. You know, I actually didn't have to look it up because later on in the day, Cheryl sent me a text saying, never mind, I figured it out, got it all figured out. I said, well, that's great for you, but what about everybody else? So I did talk her out of the verses that she found so that I didn't have to go look it up. And, uh, and so uh, she was kind enough to do that. So now we all get to find out what in the world this is talking about. There's a lot of stuff that it actually talks about. And, the, and it's all in the Bible. You just have to find it. And Cheryl found it, so here we go. Luke 19.18 is uh, where we read, Whoever falls on that stone will be broken. Well, the answer to that is found in Isaiah chapter 8, beginning at verse 11. And you have that in your folder said, For the Lord spoke thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Do not say a conspiracy concerning all that this people call a conspiracy, nor be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. The Lord of hosts, him you shall hallow. 
Let him be your fear. Let him be your dread. He will be as a sanctuary, but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, as a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble, they shall fall and be broken, be snared and taken. So from Isaiah 8, we see that the Lord himself is a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense for people. Everybody who does not accept him as a sanctuary, as the sanctuary that he actually is, is going to find that he becomes a stone that they fall upon and are broken by it. The chief priests, the scribes, and the elders of the people were stumbling all over Jesus. They were offended by him. He wasn't the Messiah they had hoped for. This was going to lead to them being broken by God's stumbling stone. Regarding the second half of Luke 19.18, which is, but on whom, but on whomever it, it the stone falls, it will grind him to powder. This is a reference to Daniel 2. In Daniel 2, King Nebuchadnezzar has had a dream. He's had a very unusual dream. And he wanted the dream interpreted to him. He made an interesting demand of all of his seers and prophets and people that normally give him advice. His unusual request or demand from them was that they also were to tell him the dream before they interpreted the dream. And they were, of course, taken aback because it's like, well, how are we supposed to do that? The reason why Nebuchadnezzar did that is it was a test of the soothsayers and seers and everybody else because he figured that If they just give an interpretation of what he tells them he saw, it could be just a false interpretation. But if they could tell him the dream, then the interpretation would be true. But since nobody could do that in his official court, he ordered that all of the soothsayers and and seers and so forth, that they be killed. Well, Daniel was among them. But he wasn't at court that day when the demand was made. And so when the guy came around saying, hey, I've come here to kill you, by the order of the king, Daniel was very wise, and he says, well, why is is the sentence so harsh? And so then the guy told Daniel what it was, what the demand was, and Daniel said, don't kill everybody yet. Tell the king, I'm going to give me some time. Just give me some time. So Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they went to the Lord in prayer. And the Lord gave Daniel the dream and the interpretation. And so he went back to the chief officer and said, don't kill anyone, go tell the king that I have what he needs. So everybody was, the stay of execution, it was, you know, the execution was stopped. And so, of course, Daniel was, he didn't give himself glory. He said, you know, no one on earth can give you this. Only the God of heaven can reveal this, and he has. And so here's the dream. You, O king, were watching, and behold, a great image. This great image whose splendor was excellent, stood before you, and its form was awesome. This image's head was of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. You watched while a stone was cut out without hands which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like chaff from the summer threshing floors. 
The wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. The meaning of the dream is as follows. The parts of the image portrayed by the gold, silver, bronze, and iron, and clay, they all represented the rise and fall of the kingdoms, starting with Babylon. We know that kingdoms do rise, and they do fall. However, a kingdom was coming, a kingdom not built by man, was going to come, it's represented by that stone that no man cut out. That stone was going to crush all of the human kingdoms and turn them into dust and powder. This kingdom, as we all know, is God's kingdom. And the king of that kingdom is Jesus. And Jesus was the one that the builders were rejecting. He was the stone the builders were rejecting. And Jesus' question to them regarding what was meant by the words, whoever falls on that stone will be broken, but on whomever it falls, it will grind, them to pow- grind him to powder, was meant as a warning to them. They were already stumbling all over Jesus. Why? Because they had set up their own little kingdom. The whole Jewish temple thing that they had going, where they profited much by it. That would actually, that, that actually was a kingdom, but it was built by man. You know what we know? We know that all woods, hay, stubble, anything that is built by man is going to be destroyed. If it can't go through fire, it's going to be destroyed. And so he was telling them that them not accepting the stone that God had sent to them was going to end up crushing them. It was a warning. By the end of this age, God is going to crush all political and all religious kingdoms. All of them. His kingdom is going to be the only one left standing after all of the dust settles. And from Daniel 2, we know that God's kingdom is going to be the one that will ultimately fill the entire earth. Now, what a joy that's going to be. That's going to be great. But let's not kid ourselves. That day and that time is not going to come without a whole lot of trouble coming first. You know, you think about it right now. What do we have politically in our world? We've got going on with those who think themselves to be the leaders, the global elite, who think themselves leaders are talking about the Great Reset. Right? We hear about the Great Reset or the New World Order. But even they know that in order to get the new, you've got to destroy the old. Which is what they're going to do. That's their plan. What they don't understand is that what they are building, what they are destroying, and then what they're going to try to build is not going to stand either. Anything that man builds to his glory is going to be crushed by the stone that God's going to send. The stone is Jesus. There's only two ways you can go. You can be for God, for Jesus, or against him. There's only two ways. Going to be for the stone or against him. In Jesus' day, and there are many people today who reject that stone, he still is the one that's going to be the one that is going to be the chief cornerstone upon which God's kingdom is going to be built. Either for him or against him. Jesus was talking to the religious leaders. They were against him. But that is what that particular those particular two verses mean. And it's 
nice, you know, it's nice to be able to find that interpretation in the scriptures so that we don't have to guess what they mean. Amen.